Because, of course, the fun thing about doing uh, color photocopies is some places will, will do it, but at Staples will put black and white on the inside yeah, of your do. color. So right. that gives you, you know, you can put something on it. No, uh, no blank sheets, that's the other thing. If, if you've got a blank page, you've got a page you can put a drawing on or mm -hmm. uh, something, piece of information. Unless the printer won't let you. Well, that's the, oh, yes. <laughs> if you're, if you're working with some printers, they will not let you print on the inside cover. I mean, that's just such is life. Yeah, it's kind of psychological. I think that depending on the size of the book, like if you're slamming that book is a lot larger, I, would, I see that in my mind perfectly except the fact that there's a blank inside cover. Yeah, it's oh, like, yeah. A, like novels, you know, you oh, get sure. they don't print on the inside. Yeah, well, I mean, no, nobody yeah. does, but but you also don't necessarily with comics want to do the two or three blank flyleaves that right, right. you find. I mean, you don't want to maybe want to start your story right inside the front cover, but you know, inside the front cover, a good place to put a big drawing in the title of the book. And so the first th thing that happens when people open it is they're they're participating right away. I'm surprised at how many times people give me their book. You know, look they. Um, just started out usually, and they don't even have where you can contact them. You don't have uh, what issue number or how much it costs or any of that. No, no, <laughs> the, the big problems, no price. No, I've gotten stuff where the person's name wasn't on it. Mm -hmm. Put your name on the front cover. Now I'll admit that a lot of times I, I cheat and I put the price on the back cover, but people are used to that right. with a lot of books and stuff. Mm -hmm. I think that's too big a problem because you get so involved in your design you don't want to cut it off. <laughs> um, about time and money. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what about it? That's what business really is, time and money. Uh, now, obviously, uh, you need both. <laughs> um, and uh, in my experience, you know, it's always better to, to learn something and spend time doing it as opposed to spending the money on something. Although, um, I call time, it's kind of corny, but I call it chrono money, because it really is money if you're doing things you just by the hour. It's, like, it's just money that's untangible. Um, and I, I, I always go for you know, spending the time on something versus spending the money. How do you guys feel about that? Sure. I got no money. The more research you do, the more money you're going to save. <laughs> All the way around. Yeah, I, I usually use the example of like a website. You can learn how to make a website yourself, or you can pay somebody to do it for you. And then once they made it for you, you've got to pay the new updates on yeah. it. Yeah, it, it turns into a... And the thought, um, even something so simple as folding and stapling mini comics, there's people pay to have it done. And then they say you can't make money doing mini comics. Because I have to charge $5 for it because of how much I've spent on having it cut, folded, and stapled. And it's like, do you watch television? You know, do you watch movies on DVD? If you're watching TV, you can fold it. <laughs> and you get yourself a lap board, and you sit down and you fold. Um, you know, the, there are lots of ways, especially either when you're just starting out or if you like being at this level for artistic reasons, which is why I do it. Um, there's a lot of ways you can substitute your time for the money you don't. We can have friends come over. You have all the sheets in a big circle, and everybody just goes around. I, and I've had, and I've had things table. that I wanted people to help that have people help me totally. Yeah, I, it's so good. I hire employees with pizza. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I guess discipline is an important thing too, because so many people and I'm guilty of myself in this deadline. Um, and I think that is obviously a turnoff for people to read your comics because they expect them to come out. If you're doing issues, that is. Well, that's it. I mean, a way to avoid that is never start doing it. <laughs> I mean, seriously, I, I have, I try, I do. I will schedule my professional life around my convention um, because I work entirely alone and new stuff comes out when it's done and everybody's just happy with it or if they're not, that's their problem. Uh, this is a, the trouble with, with deadlines is once you start setting them, you must be keeping them. People seem to be, I've never had any trouble with any of my audience expecting something and not being willing to wait for it. Um, but if I were telling people it was bi-monthly and I didn't make it, then I'd be in trouble. 
My so problem is if I don't have a deadline, then they all say, well, let me know well, when see, you need something. Well, see, this is different. As soon as I have it, then I can use it. This is different if you're working with other people. Yeah. You can't be that flexible if you're working with other people because, you know, there's a reason they call it cabinet. It's anybody who does an anthology has my wholehearted admiration. Well, that's um, you know, you know, release dates and announcement releases is another good reason to have a blog mm -hmm. or even an email list. And a lot of people here, myself included, have a, lit, a little sign up sheet on the table so they can they buy the book they like it, they can get the email first time and they'll get notified when the next one comes out. It's very important, that's very important for someone who works like I do, mm -hmm. where I don't work to a schedule. Mm -hmm. So you you know when it appears, when you read it in the book, when I say you need to see it. What's the release of, uh, what's the average release time? Uh, it's approximately quarterly, and the, well, there's about a one-year hiatus now. I just finished the first storyline, but for the first 12 issues, it was approximately quarterly, depending on how healthy my credit cards were at that time, and uh, whether or not I could pay the printing bill. So getting towards like, holy crap, it's been three months, i got to put out another one, let's, all right, I'll try an account, all right, uh, I can take a cash advance from this one, and put it in the bank over here, and I don't have to eat next week, so it fluctuated a little bit, but I, I was very intent on getting four books out every year, and this past year, I actually did five. Jumping topics here, um, you have different artists see the physical books, yes. and uh, I know that like I wasn't really, I mean I was familiar with Plastic Farm, but never really read it until I met it because Daniel Corset is in it. Right. Uh, so th that kind of shows that when you have like different artists contributing things, their fan base kind of comes along and sees those things, or do you not feel that way? <laughs> well, I, I was definitely, well, with Danielle's story especially, I, I needed her because of the nature of the story. I needed her style for it to um, offset. I don't really want to go into that. Yeah, right now, I, but I she has a very, very pleasant, uh, simple style. But, yeah, I, I mean, it would be great to start working with people with gigantic fan bases and get them over to my stuff, but really what I look for is just some of the style that fits the story. Um, I'm not going to take a short one and try to fit a story that Lance Artist may be not be right for. And I think that tends to work better. I mean, you get some of the other artists' fans over, but you also keep your current readers happy because you're not... Do you write albums for me? Yes. Well, I actually I draw about half of them. Danielle, uh, I'm not going to tell the Danielle story. <laughs> she, I, I gave a uh, an extension on her deadline. It's like, I, uh, I, I've been asked to ink Captain America. <coughs> Can I, I might be a little late with this. Like, yeah, go ahead, go work for Captain America. It's fine. <laughs> Whatever. Oh, um, in a way, you're a little bit of Although Alan, I didn't get experience too, but I know that's your, your big focus right now. Um, and how does promotion um, differ for you? you know, publishers, you work with, usually want you to come to their table and promote it, you go to shows. Um, usually it shows I still have my own table just because I feel like it's kind of weird being in a publisher's table. I mean, obviously they only have a limited amount of space, they have like real estate taken up by all these books. So, I mean, really, other conditions, it's worth it. I mean, I just think of it as advertising, basically. You know, spend whatever it is, whatever it is on the table, that's fine. And there's some conventions, like this convention, that my publisher is weird. So, um, so, I mean, yeah, for me, it's totally worth it. Plus, it's just, you know, gives me a chance to still talk with people and stuff like that, where if you're just sitting at the table for a half hour or something like that, you know, you can talk with them, you know. So, um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I don't, it's it's weird. Like, 
I kind of, I think that I was under the impression initially that I wouldn't have to worry about promotion as much, but honestly, like for instance, the Diamond League, the coach nobody works in Diamond League, sorry, but they, they suck. <laughs> and uh, they really, really suck. Like for instance, Dark Horse has an exclusive contract with uh, Diamond for distribution in book markets, and uh, they really suck for book market distribution. In fact, none of my publishers use them for that reason. They're horrible. Um, so, like for instance, my books are in you know most Barnes and Nobles or Borders or that stuff. So really, I mean, the promotion aspect is still I kind of have to do myself, you know, to some degree. And I think you never have, you never stop doing that. Something it's not like the Oscars where don't go. To Conventions or don't know the game things like that, and you still have to go out and do this. So maybe it's more of a name versus, but I think that's for any of us. You know, like, unless you're doing, unless you're doing, unless you're doing like one set series all the time with one character, you're always kind of just putting the name. I mean, that's a lot of things. So. Yeah, I have actually started putting one name on all of it in an effort to okay. kind of make it seem like a series, sure. <laughs> because that that is what. Comics readers, particularly, would seem to expect. Yeah. They want your name to equal That's the name of the series. Right. It's what you're doing. Yeah, I think we've talked about that. Yeah, before. oh, this is, this is an ongoing thing that, this is the thing about the world of comics that probably makes me personally crazy. It's, yeah. it's really strange. They have no name. Yeah. Oh, hey, plastic. Yeah, yeah, people yeah. will talk to you by the name <laughs> of your book, and it's just. <laughs> I, I, I fought against it actively for years, and I think I did myself irreparable damage by doing so. So what I've got now is kind of a compromise. I'm calling the big stories, keep young, and then you know, each one has its own title. And then I'm, I'm, I'm putting the name on some of the titles in the mini comics, and they're all being published under the rubric of keep young and then it works. So it's, clear to everyone, because I decided the only thing they have in common is the name of the town where they all take place. And if what they have in common is the setting, rather than characters, then that's what I'm going to exploit. And I should have been doing this all along. Um, but I, you know, I was a little bit stubborn and I wanted to do everything. I thought I could make, have things my own way and it, it doesn't work that way. If I could give Prima one word of advice is have a title and use it. And just live with it, even though it stinks. Mm -hmm. Not your title stinks, but the, the whole no. I think <laughs> your title stinks. But I think Rafer's doing the right thing by doing so. And I think annoying as it is, I think it's the right thing to do. Hey, every time they say it, it's a yeah. plug for the book. That's right. <laughs> um, let's see. I well, let's get back to distribution. Let's move on. Let's move over to that. Um, comic retailers. Now, most of us who are all from creators here, um, like, like all of us, all self published right now. Uh, I mean, do you find that, what kind of, I mean, retailers don't just rely on order books, there's not specific, there's some retailers that are kind of like movers and shakers, mm -hmm. uh, by retailers and retailers. And, and um, uh, I mean, in my experience, it seems to be I think 10% of the retailers out there are like the ones that are just really thinking friendly. Willing to take on your book. I'm just not talking strictly uh, comic book stores, uh, bookstores like that. Um, now, with bookstores, I think it's really interesting. I see like what Tokyo Pop's doing with manga and a huge penetration in bookstores, which I really see opening up new doors and being away from like limited to just you know, comics, but specialty shops. Um, have any of you, um, you know, what kind of places sell your products other than comic stores? The major bookstores, you have to have a literary agent or they won't. There's other ways to do it. Um, I, I really, there, I, I know some people who could talk to you really a lot about this, and, and I, because I, I can't, but I know there's other ways into it. A really good way I know is to get your books reviewed in library websites. Okay, anything, or library magazines. If you can get a review in library journal or school library journal, you are golden because that gets you into Baker and Taylor, which is the distributors to libraries and bookstores can order from Baker and Taylor. And sometimes you can get inside with Baker and Taylor. 
I have a book that I hope will come out this summer. You know, so I'm not saying it will, <laughs> but a book that I hope will come out late this summer that I'm tr going to keep trying to read. Um, Alan, do you have an ISBN number on your book? No. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Most of oh, the bookstores, if you go, they uh, stick theirs over whatever. Well, they stick their sticker, but you still have to have the ISBN number. You have to have it registered. Yeah, you can still do that. Yeah. And sure, buy definitely get ISBN numbers. Buy two hundred of them. By 20, it used to be 20 for 200 bucks. You buy 10 at a time. I helped uh, my Whatever. wife put out a book uh, on fiction. Anyway, uh, I went on this, uh, it was Book Surge, and they print the books. They also got bought out by Amazon.com, so the book is now available on Amazon.com. But we did the ISBN, and it was all free. I mean, uh, they told us how where to go and where to get the number, and I put it all on the book for it. So the Amazon was the next one. Anybody here? The number one thing to do with Amazon, if you want to read because Doug and Pony shows on Amazon, uh, is for God's sake, think when you put your price on the cover of your book. Think, think, think about what you're going to get back from Amazon. Because once I, I priced my book, and I, I will say, I'll, I'll, I'll stand by my price, okay? I mean, it, it's, it was set logically relative to my cost, cost of my printing, um, at what wholesale would bring me at half. I mean, I, I stand by my price, but let me tell you, once Amazon's taken their discount and I've shipped them that book, I don't sell enough that I can have them keep it in stock, so I have to send them three or four at a time. And let me tell you, I am making bookies through Amazon. What kind of, over so much personal information, what kind of percentage does Amazon uh, they're taking 60% 60 off. That's yeah, pretty standard. For and uh, yeah, yeah, and, and I wasn't, I wasn't necess I wasn't thinking about that. I was not planning, frankly, to get any kind of distribution for this book. It a, was a pilot. It was an experiment. I was planning to sell most of them myself through my website, through, through um, convention sales. Um, through private dealings with retailers, you know, where it's the 50, you do the 50 50 deal. Um, I wasn't going to make a lot of money, but it was going to make a couple bucks. But the 60% plus, I was not factoring in, even with media mail, the cost of shipping a few at a time. And that will murder Plus the fact that they pay you with PayPal, then the well, PayPal's they, hitting you on your They end. don't. Yeah. I make them cut me a check. Right. They don't like that very much either, but that's another issue. Next time, if I, when I do a second comic collection like this, or when I do the, the book I'm planning for this summer, believe you me, the re, quote unquote retail price on the back is going to be much higher. I'll still sell it to you one to one <laughs> at the same reasonable price. <laughs> But I'm going to put that artificial, now I know why people put these very high retail prices on stuff um, to protect themselves from that situation. It was really a learning experience, let's just put it that way. I just got a check from Amazon last week, $2.60. <laughs> well, um, in my experience, like working in Diamond, um, they, they take 60% off the cover price. Yeah, but you so plan it with the family. You yeah. should. Yeah. Well, you do. I'm like sure. This book is, was born in support of retail price. And Amazon wants, uh, or Amazon, sorry, Diamond wants to take 60% off of that, which is $2.40, which leaves $1.60. And you got to factor in printing and promotion and anything else that could go, not including time, you're easily going to take a dollar of that $1.60 off of there. You might have 60 cents profit or 10%, 15%, which is the peanuts. It's really difficult to make a career or any money at all. I know some publishers are functioning on about 15% as far as like their per unit cost, and that includes everything from shipping, printing, and promotion, and advertising, and whatever. Their per unit cost is going to be 15% of the final So that's a good way to figure things. I mean, obviously, if you're an independent person, you're not normally accruing as much cost per unit. So but basically like whatever you spend producing, if you're going to be selling it through Amazon, Diamond, all that stuff, you're probably going to want to take what it costs you to produce it and multiply it by five. Yeah, instead, instead of the usual four, which, yeah. is, you know, normally when you sell something, 
I mean, any theory, I mean, just basic economics, you take a unit cost, double it, that's your wholesale cost, double it again, that's your retail. I mean, that's just the, the yes. where you start. I mean, where you start when you're pricing things. But you try doing that this way, you will, you will find you, that is an error. <laughs> well, there isn't there a supply and demand for each hardware? Essentially, you're not getting profitability of those formulas until you're printing over 3,000. I find I can make I can make money on a mini comic like this any day of the week by using that same yeah, formula and, and, and make a hundred or two hundred at a time. Absolutely, you don't have to do well, that. Well, let's say a full size. Well, I don't know. Right. I, I never well, made a, I never made a yeah. cent on my full size book <laughs> either. A, so. a full size book, honestly, like. Well, yeah, I mean, oh, yeah. 2,000 copies, let's put it this way. I had 2,000 copies each of my four full-size books that I did, and I'm living with them. I've made a new wall in my bedroom <laughs> out of this. It was a colossal mistake. I mean, they're good. I'm, I stand by the material. They still sell. I've put them together in a package of four at half cover price, and they still sell. People enjoy reading them. I, people hear back, and they, I give them away sometimes. And I'm planning that once I get a few more things on the table, we'll start just doing it. I can't believe it's been 55 minutes, or you only have five minutes left. Um, is there any questions, or does anybody have anything they specifically want to say? Well, I have a sheet that I made up with just some ideas on how to market your book, you know, mostly for free. And just a head start, I mean, a lot of the stuff you can find on the net anyway, but for instance, uh, news releases to send, and I found a template there's a link here for a template on how to set, type up your own press release, and then you can send it to all the different newspapers. And when you have a new, uh, the papers in your town might be interested in knowing that there's someone that's producing uh, comics in their hometown, your hometown. So oh, yeah. you might get a little press the there. Take a picture of it. Special. Yeah. I had that happen to me. It was during the, the slow time between Christmas and New Year's a few years ago. So they, they, she came in the house and took a picture of me in my studio. And it actually got on the got on the uh, got on the newswire, and um, um, newspapers from several surrounding states <coughs> picked up the story. And I got I got a lot of customers off that crazy little. So I have a little handout story. if anyone wants. Yeah, I've got a few. Of them. And I'm sure uh, I speak for everybody. I mean, if you have any questions for us, you can oh, come absolutely. To the table. Come, come see the film. Well, well, yes. <laughs> <laughs> because while we're talking to you, we'll make a gamble and attempt to sell you some comments. Well, <laughs> selling, do you guys want to, you guys have any, uh, want to offer a discount to anyone here in the room? Or maybe just point them Well, what I, what I promised for the show, uh, issue one is free. So here's a big stack of them. Everybody <laughs> would like a copy of issue one. We are also at uh, table 78, so you get out there and make a right, <laughs> sign. Shameless self-promotion. I've got a cutout of Sparky the Dog and the flag of the state of Indiana on the front of the table, and I will give any of you a free minute. Okay, the, with the dealing with Diamond, is that 60% across the board, or as your book picks up, do they adjust it? Like, If you can get a readership and draw people to your book, do you then have any kind of leverage with Diamond to get a better percentage in your pocket? I just wonder. If they'll take it at all. I mean, I hate to hawk on diamond, but you know, it's the nature of the beast. It's right now you're kind of stuck. If you want, if you want to get distributed widely, you kind of have to deal with them. If you distribute independently direct to retailers, you can often split the difference and just do 50 /50. Okay. And a lot of people will take that. Do you do that? I mean, like you work through the printer, you do your printing, whatever. Can you, like you did? Hey, here, a comic book store. This is me. Buy it straight for me. Don't go through Diamond. I mean, is it literally you can't get in the door through that with a distributor? Or they, they, are, they, they don't want to do it usually. A lot, of, a lot of stores don't want to do it just because it's too much work. A lot of the yeah. stores aren't set up for the mini comics and the oddball yeah. sizes and whatnot. You know, mm -hmm. they just have the regular comic racks. But yeah. then some stores I go to do have a wall of this for the mini comics and 
Yeah, yeah, those like are the laughing people. Ogre. I know they had yeah. a wall. And they were kind of used to, they were kind of, yeah. the stores that are used to it are used to do it. They have an invoice form and they'll send it, you know. And it's maybe, I can think of five or six stores that buy from me regularly and others. There's stores that will buy from me a show. There's stores yeah, that come like to conventions. There's even a few out there. Green now. Brain Comics is here Green now. Brains. I know they'll be around and they'll take five copies of the new book and have cover because they always do. That's actually and what I sell. Whatever I sell, I really don't deal with stores directly. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's self-published stuff, but yeah, I usually don't have self storage because it's actually it's not going to come up. That's a very common. Yeah. I much, for me, a much more common experience than doing it. And then yeah. you don't have to show. That's right. <laughs> right. That's why you always bring a lot of comics with you to a show. More than you expect to sell direct to the, to the customers because those retailers, especially on Sunday afternoon, they'll come prowling about. We're glad to see you. Okay, we're going to have to everybody. Um, <laughs> thanks, everybody, for coming to the questions. Thank I can talk you. to myself or anybody else here. Oh, and I'll give everybody a dollar off my books. <laughs>